okay we're going to talk about banking of roads what are bank roads you see when you take a turn if you want to go very fast usually it's the case when in racetracks and circuits then uh, as you can see over here the outer edge is a little bit raised or in this case it's raised a lot uh, over the inner edge so this is what we call as banking and the angle uh, of the banking decides how fast you can go and we are going to try and evaluate what's the maximum speed with which you can travel so imagine there's a car that is coming on this bank road uh, so the car would look like that and now let's draw up some surfaces and let's try to evaluate all the forces so what are the forces that we know are going to come on this object we know gravity here it is mg acts on it we know that there's a contact force we call that as a normal force over here and also there's friction so you think about which direction friction would come imagine the race car was going extremely fast if it was going very fast then you can see that it always tries to skid on the outer side right it all the cars will always try to go towards the outer edge of this or outer of the or outer edge of the turns therefore friction will always come in the opposite direction trying to avoid that skidding and so the friction will come down the slope here is friction and that will be the static friction and again since we are evaluating the maximum case the static friction will have a maximum value okay <clears throat> also important to notice that this object is going in a circle maybe that center is somewhere over here here is the center of that circle and so it's going to experience a centripetal acceleration and so that acceleration is in this direction here is going to be the centripetal acceleration which we know is v squared which is the maximum value over here divided by the radius the radius of the circle it's going to take okay so we are in two dimensions it's time to resolve them I take my x and y this way again notice why i'm taking my x and y in this direction because my acceleration will be along the x-axis that's why and now we can decompose these vectors so if i call this angle this is the banking angle if i call this angle as alpha and again it's pure geometry let me use a different color uh, it's pure geometry that this angle is also going to be alpha and so is this angle going to be alpha and so now we can resolve friction into two components as shown and when you resolve friction again you have the component which is along alpha will be cos alpha so this will be fs max I'll just write this okay i'll just write fs max cos alpha it's along alpha and the one adjacent to it i'm uh, sorry the one opposite to it is going to be sin alpha so this is fs max sine alpha and we can also resolve normal force and so you have two components of the normal force again the component which is along alpha adjacent to alpha is cos alpha or use a different ink this can be seen um, let me go for this one okay so here is n cos alpha and you can see another component over here right over here it's, it's n sin alpha so these are the forces which are acting and again once i resolve them i'm going to rid of i'm going to get to rid get, going to get rid of those n and fs max because i already resolved them and so the picture looks at least a little bit more neat and you can understand it and so now try and understand which are the forces that we have along the x direction and the forces along the y direction. Along the y direction, which we will start with, uh, has the forces, we have an upward force which is uh, n cos alpha and we have the downward two forces, uh, the friction and uh, mg. And in the y axis, there is no acceleration. So we have equilibrium. And so I can just say the upward force must be exactly equal to the downward force. So the upward force, n cos alpha, must be exactly equal to the downward force, which is fs max sine alpha plus mg. And what we are going to do from this equation is we are going to try and calculate or get an expression for normal force. And we will use that expression in our next equation. So this is going to be mu s into n 
to sine alpha plus mg and so I can keep the n on one side sine alpha equals mg and so I can take this n out and so what I'll get is n equals uh, mg by cos alpha minus mu s sin this is my equation 1 I'm going to use that in our x-axis okay I'll write the x-axis equations here uh, in x-axis I'm going to have to use the Newton's second law properly you have to work out a little bit careful I have uh, n sine alpha then I have friction fs max uh, cos alpha and these two added together give me the net force and there is an acceleration there is a centripetal acceleration if you wrote down v square over r okay I'll just put a line over here all right, I'll continue this over here, and I get n sine alpha plus mu s n cos alpha equals m v squared by r. It's pretty much straightforward from here. All you have to do is substitute for n. So I'll just take the n out and do some algebra. That's it. And all you have to do is to be careful with your plus and minus signs. Yeah, so substitute from 1. So now I have mg, I have cos alpha minus mu s sine alpha. And this, this is my n, which gets multiplied by sine alpha plus mu s cos alpha. And that equals m v squared over r. m goes, can you see that? I will continue this in the next slide. So I have g into sine alpha plus mu s cos alpha equals, okay. So I have g into sine alpha, what was it? Plus mu s cos alpha, plus mu s plus alpha divided by cos alpha minus mu s alpha. Cos alpha minus alpha equals v squared over r. Okay, now we get an expression for v squared. Rg, you know this huge thing, blah blah blah. And so v now becomes square root rg into sine alpha plus minus cos alpha divided by cos alpha minus mu s sine alpha. And or to make it a little easier to remember, you will divide and multiply by cos alpha. And so our final expression, which is a little bit easier to remember, becomes uh, I have a sine by cos that gives me tan plus mu s divided by 1 minus uh, mu s tan alpha. This is easier because I like to remember this as a form of tan a plus tan b divided by 1 minus tan a tan b. You see, it's very similar to that. So it's like tan alpha plus mu s by 1 minus mu s tan alpha. If you compare this with the equation that we get for a flat road, that equation on the flat road is going to be rg into mu s. So this number over here is way greater than mu s. And therefore, the maximum speed which you can take this turn on a banked road is way higher than which you can do on a flat road. And now, there's always a particular speed, we call that as the optimum speed. And at this speed, if you go, friction becomes zero. So all you have to do is substitute mu s equals zero in another equation. And in that case, I'll just call it as v optimum. It's going to be r g and when mu s becomes zero, you get tan alpha. We call that as the optimum speed because at that speed there is no friction. Uh, it's useful because with friction the tires tend to become a little bit wary because of all the stress and stuff. And if you try to hit it at the optimum speed, maybe you can conserve your tires. And also when there is no friction, for example, for aeroplanes, you have to use this equation. 
aeroplanes are going to bank right when they take a turn and you can't use uh, this equation for the, the previous equation for the aeroplanes because the aeroplanes don't have anything else to turn so they have to bank and the banking equation for aeroplanes is going to be the optimum speed.